What's going on, everybody? We are live. Welcome to Lego Motel Live, where I get to hang out with my subscribers and talk to them and do fun stuff. So we've been doing a bunch of streams lately. We've done about four hours of streaming in the past two days, and I said on yesterday's stream that if we hit 40 likes during the stream, I would do a stream today, and we did, and here I am. So I just want to thank all you guys for helping me reach 40 likes yesterday. I really appreciate that. I have the stream open on my laptop so I can see what you guys are commenting and respond. And this is just this is just basically a, you know, I'm glad you guys watch my videos. I'm glad you're interested in my content, but this is a way for you guys on a regular basis to just connect with me and, and communicate to me directly about my videos, about your videos, about what you want my opinion on something, stuff like that. So let's get right into it. Let's look at the chat. We got Akash Lego Studios, number 82. Lego Motel, can I join, please? That's a good question to start off with. For these streams, at least for now, I want to just, like, I'm not, like, a master at streaming. I'm not the best at it, but uh, I have a lot of fun doing it. And the best way to communicate to everybody on an equal level is if I'm streaming and I just look at the chat and I communicate with people that way. Because I've tried having guests on the stream, but what ends up happening is it just, like, one, it's not as, it's never as popular when I have guests on the stream. And it's, it, it's hard to keep it focused and it's hard to just go from one topic to the other without getting like distracted and like technical difficulties and just this tidal wave of problems that can happen with that kind of stuff. So Sunlust Productions says the hat. Yep, this is this is my new hat. I used to wear a beanie during the winter time, but now it's these are the hotter months, so now I have I got a snapback with uh with Funko Pop stuff on it. Uh, all right, so we got about 23 people watching. We're already up to 19 likes. That's pretty awesome. There's one thing that bugged me about yesterday's stream that I want to address is I pulled this figure out to show you guys at the end of my top 20 Funko Pop thing, but then I noticed that the uh, it, the connection like glitched or whatever and that the video cut out. So the whole time I was like, you could just hear me talking about this figure, but you couldn't see it. So I just wanted to, just before <laughs> the stream cuts out again and we lose video, I just want to show you this is the figure I was talking about yesterday. Nice artwork on the back of Jon Snow. They've got a bunch of other figures from Game of Thrones out in this format, but it's not its not really many characters I'd be interested in. There's Ghost, which would be a cool one. Uh, they have him out. I'm, I'll probably get him eventually. There's uh, the Night King. There's White Walkers. There's a couple Wildlings, stuff like that. But they don't have any anything from King's Landing. They don't have like Ned Stark. They don't have Hodor. They don't have Bran. Arya, Cersei, Daenerys, Jorah, like what? I mean, they're making like a bunch of random wildlings before making a lot of the big characters. So that's why I just got Jon Snow. I'll probably get a few more later, but I just wanted to let you guys know that Funko is making those now. They're, they're actually, let me pull it up again. They're, they're making, these. this isn't just your regular reaction figure. Like I have the, the Pulp Fiction reaction figure stacked up back there. And those don't really have much articulation. The paint jobs aren't great. They're, they're, they're nice retro figures, but this is less of a retro figure and more of just a really high quality three and three quarter inch Game of Thrones figure, which is, if these had existed a couple of years ago, I wouldn't have started collecting Funko Pops. I would have just, because I started collecting Funko Pops, uh, the, the Game of Thrones collection of Funko Pops a few years ago. And the Game of Thrones Pops are what got me into Funko Pops in general, because I just, I loved Game of Thrones so much. I wanted something to collect and Funko Pops were the only thing where you could get a bunch of different characters for a reasonable price. But we'll get right into the stream. I really want to thank you guys for watching and being part of it and stuff like that. I'm getting better at it every day. Uh, if we can reach if we can reach 50 likes while we're live, then I will do another stream tomorrow. So that's kind of how I'll do it. I'll I'll bump up the like requirement every time. Uh, but uh, you know, I'll definitely always stream on the weekends from now on, but if you you want like multiple streams in a row on weekdays then let's try to hit 50 likes so i would really appreciate it if you're not subscribed yet please subscribe follow me on twitter for updates as to when these streams are how, behind the scenes stuff for videos i'm working on when new videos are coming lego motel 21 lords of the cringe is in the works should be coming about this time next week i know a lot of you are probably here because you want to know when my next actual upload is maybe some of you are sick of the streams but i'm having a lot of fun doing the streams i just want to thank you guys one more time for joining me and hitting the like button, helping me get to 50 likes. If we do, if we can get to 50 likes while we're still live, I will come back and do another stream tomorrow evening. Either way, I will be coming back uh, either Friday or Saturday night, and I'll do a couple of streams during the weekends. But like I said, again, if you want to see me stream tomorrow, if you're having fun with these, 
leave a like. If we can get to 50, I'll keep. I'll do one every day this week. You know, I, I'm, you know, I, I, I can make it happen. All right, let's uh, let's jump into the comments. All right, Mighty Matt is about to get blocked. Have fun being blocked. Uh, Deadpool fan 101 says, "Where's Dick in Batman?" Uh, you mean <laughs> you mean uh, you mean Robin? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, Lego Motel, do I have a dead shot pop from Suicide Squad? I don't know. Do you? Can you please react to my Lego audition stop motion? Yeah, that's cool. What I've been doing the past couple days is uh, reacting to videos that you guys have made or like just videos that you guys want me to react to. So I will absolutely do that a little bit later in the stream. But for now, I just want to give you guys a couple updates before I get into my top 20 Lego minifigures. You may or may not have noticed that's in the title. I've gathered about 20 of my favorite minifigures. I don't know, again, just like the Funko Pop thing yesterday, I don't know exactly what order they go in, so it'll be kind of not too thought out, but I just kind of pick my favorite 20. I'm going to show them to you one at a time. And Gungan Hunter, welcome to the chat. Wild Dog 42, welcome back. I remember you from the past couple days. ABB Studio says, "What's up?" Not much, dude. I'm just, I'm just streaming. I'm just streaming. Andrew is asking me, "What do you use for stop motion?" I use this camera. I covered this yesterday, but I'll pull it up real quick again. I use a Canon T4i. It's from the Rebel series. It's like the lower end of the spectrum of DSLR cameras. I just like the image quality. I, I like being able to stick a really nice lens on it, even though there are plenty of successful Lego animators have used iPads, iPhones, you know, iOS software, mobile devices to make incredible stop motion. Akash Lego Productions is probably the best example of that. I'm pretty sure the dude uses an iPad for every stop motion he makes, and he nails it, dude. He, he makes way better stop motion than I, than I can. I look up to the dude. So it's really cool that he's, you know, he's, he's doing that stuff with, with an iPad. Like that that's how you know you're a master at stop motion is when you're just you're doing that with an iPad. Cause it's it's you're like a MacGyver of stop motion if you're if you're doing that. And I, I tip my hat to you, sir. Merrimack the Great says, What table do you use for your Lego stop motion? I use this table. Uh, I wonder if I can if you can if you can see it, it's probably just because of the way the camera's angled. But this is actually a uh, a long uh, multi level standing desk. Uh, so it has like one level down here where my keyboard is and a few inches above there's a level here where my computer's sitting on and on the other side of that I have my computer where I edit and on the other side of the table here is where I do all my stop motion I have a base plate big gray base plate taped down to it and that's where I do most of my stop motion uh, this table has a crank on the side of it so I can manually like rise it about an inch or two at a time or like even half an inch sometimes. And when, when you see in my videos, those like rising or falling camera mo motions or movements, it's it's basically me, I crank the table to rise it or lower it. I take a frame, I crank the table, and just having a, a standing desk that can also lower and be a sitting desk is excellent for stop motion, especially like a hand crank manual one, because it allows me to get these really cool up and down you know, camera motions. I can pedestal with my camera frame by frame, because I can, I'm not only the camera's staying still, so it's not a shaky shot, and I'm just cranking up the table. So you guys get the point. Uh, that's been pretty, that's been, I think I've explained that. BS says, bye, guys, and Lego Motel. Hey, thanks for stopping in. I really appreciate it, dude. Nuggy Nation says, Ramsey, how do you do the mace voice? Um, how do I do the mace voice? I just kind of do it. God damn it, man. Why you got to ask me how I do it? I don't know how I do it. I just do it, man. You still playing that Pokemon crap? That's how I do the maze voice. It's that's exactly how I do it right there. Uh, Magnum Ranger is asking me, you ever think of making stop motion with action figures such as Game of Thrones figures and Black Series? Yeah, absolutely. I have a collection of Star Wars Black Series figures, and I have a collection of Star Wars 3.75 inch figures, and, uh, and just you know random other figures, of course, as you can see all throughout my room. And I've always wanted to do stop motion stuff with them, but I just don't. I don't know where to start, so I'm gonna have to think about it for a while. You can. It's a safe bet that eventually on my channel I will start using action figures for storytelling. But the name of the channel is Lego Motel. Uh, my specialty right now is uh, stop motion stuff on YouTube. Uh, as far as my YouTube channel goes, that's my specialty. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I could, I could totally see myself using action figures at some point. So, All right, wow, we're at like an all-time high, I'm pretty sure. we got 45 people watching. 
I really want to thank you guys for, for watching. Like I said before, if we can get up to 50 likes before the stream ends, I will come back and do another stream tomorrow. We'll be going for probably like at least an hour, uh, most likely going to be two hours, but we'll, you know, we'll see who's on the stream, what's going on. The Gaming Lego wants me to say his name, and I there, I, there you go. I said it. Uh, Brick Film Studios says, check out Aubrey Studios 82. Aubrey, St I'm subscribed to Aubrey Studios. I'm 99% sure I'm subscribed to Aubrey Studios. The dude is really, really good. Really funny stuff. Great stop motion from that guy. I look up to him. Uh, Armin Films Entertainment. Awesome new live stream. Yeah, yeah. Nando is asking, can you do the Palpatine voice, please? Yeah, I am pretty sure I forget how to do it. Is, is this right? Is this the right way to do it? Ah. I need a sponge bath. <laughs> that's that's an old line. All right. I've been doing an old man voice for a long time. Ever since I used to do uh, plays, like uh, we used to do theater plays, and uh, I was in the Actors Guild in high school, and I, I I broke out the old man voice once once on there. I don't know. I don't remember if that was before or after Lego Motel. I think it was after. But uh, yeah, I've kind of kind of always had a talent for just doing weird voices. Gungan Hunter 506 says, do you remember me, dude? With a name like Gungan Hunter, how am I going to forget you, dude? Deadpool says, how do you come up with your ideas? I just live my life, and uh, I, ideas hit me, and I sometimes I do them, sometimes I don't. And uh, usually when I do them, I'm, I'm real picky about it. I try to think about it for a long time. When I made the first Lego Motels, I don't remember how long I spent planning it. I'm pretty sure it was like a one-day process where I came up with the idea for the show and then I shot the first episode within the span of the day because my animation was horrible, you know, so I could do it very quickly. Uh, but now I shoot a lot more frames. I try to put a little bit more uh, work into the voicing and the animation effects, post-processing, that kind of stuff. That's why it takes a little bit longer for me to get videos up, whereas when, my, when I first started my channel eight years ago, I was putting a video up every other day or something like that because I was just, like, cranking out just horribly done stop motion that was uh, somewhat entertaining just because of the way it was done. Um, and that's that's where I started. Everybody everybody starts somewhere. Uh, Gungan Hunter is asking me, what was the worst thing someone said to your hobby? Um, I mean, every once in a while, you I mean, it's YouTube, so every once in a while I get comments of people like telling me uh, that, you know, some people tell me I'm gay, some people tell me I'm a loser, I'm a, you know, They'll, they'll, they'll throw out those standard middle school insults and I, and I, you know, those types of people get blocked and it's, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> Merrimack the Great is, uh, he's, he's breaking out the Harambe meme. All right. I thought that meme was dead, but it's still going strong. Apparently let's get Harambe on the $1 bill guys. Let's do it. East coast 91 says, will Lord of the Rings return to Lego motel? Oh, absolutely. The very next Lego motel is called Lords of the cringe and you'll see Gandalf. You'll see a couple Lord of the Rings characters. And it is, uh, in a way, it's like a reference to Lord of the Rings. Very light reference, but mainly it's like an allegory, like a spoof, a parody of what's going on on YouTube here. I'm turning a lot of big, famous YouTubers into Legos, like Leafy is here, Philip DeFranco, Filthy Frank, Max Mofo, iDubs as the content cop, uh, Pyro Cynical, Elvis the Alien, Hey Watch Your Mouth, um, you name it, dude. I'm the, those, those are the heroes, of course. And I got villain characters, which... Not necessarily saying that these are bad people. Just in my story that I'm making, these are these are the Lego character villains based, and one of them is Keemstar, one of them is uh, Marina Joyce, Nicole Arbor, Shoe Nice. Uh, also, I'm, I'm I the one that's really stumping me right now. The the one that I'm trying to make into Lego that's been kind of hard is uh, Ethan and Ela from H three H three Productions. They're definitely going to be in it. I'm, I'm, I haven't found any like voice clips yet that I want to use from them. I'm still kind of hunting, but I'm just having trouble turning them into minifigures. So if you guys have suggestions, I'll take them. But you know, that's kind of just up to me to find the right face and the body and stuff. And I have Ela's hair, but I don't know what to do for Ethan's face or Ela's face. So I'm, I gotta just like look through my collection because I, I haven't done that yet. <clears throat> Deadpool, Killer Keemstar, yeah. All right. Yeah, Merrimack the Greatest saying Fousey Tube. Uh, Jaden JS says, "What is your favorite Funko Pop?" Let me pull it up here. I've been I've been telling you guys about my favorite Funko Pop for a couple of streams now, and I've been pulling up this guy, Mag the Mighty. He is the giant from Game of Thrones. Like I said a little bit earlier, uh, I have a big Game of Thrones Funko Pop collection that I started a few years back. I've got almost all of them in the package, and when this guy was announced. 
I didn't, you know, hell or high water, dude, I was going to get this pop. So, and I did for at retail price. So Mag the Mighty, he's the giant from uh, Game of Thrones season four. He's one of the ones that helps like attack the wall. We're already up to 40 likes, guys. That's, re that's really cool. So if we can get 10 more likes during the course of the stream, not to bug you, but if you haven't liked already, give it a like. If you want, if you want to see me stream tomorrow, I will be back tomorrow if we can hit 50 likes before the end of the stream. There's 40 of you guys watching. You're the 40 coolest people in the world. The Gaming Lego says, I need a new show. Do you have a suggestion? Uh, I mean, of course, I would, you know, Game of Thrones, Breaking Bad. Uh, I heard Mr. Robot's pretty good. I heard, uh, what's it called? The Walking Dead's really good, apparently. Uh, I've seen the, fr the first episode was awesome. Uh, that's the only thing I've seen of The Walking Dead. I need to, I need to get back into that show. Saw the first couple episodes of Daredevil. That show was really good. I, a lot of shows, uh, like Breaking Bad and Game of Thrones, I'm totally caught up, but a lot of shows like, you know, Rick and Morty or, you know, Walking Dead, what have you, that I have not actually, I've seen a couple episodes, but I haven't gotten to catch up with the series. The Battle Frapper says Xbox One or PS4. Uh, hmm. I mean, my two choices of gaming console are, I mean, don't kill me after I say this, but I like the Nintendo Wii U, and I have, I'm a PC gamer. I've been playing a lot of Doom, uh, Battlefront. Try, I want to get Overwatch at some point. PC gamer, Nintendo Wii U, but if I had to choose between Xbox or PS4, I guess I would choose PS4, just for no reason at all, just because it sounds sounds kind of cool. <laughs> Lego Productions says, hey, I'm making my version of Lego Motel. I can't wait to see it, dude. A spoof of a spoof. I can only imagine what hilari hilarity... Yeah, and Wow, we're up to 49 likes already, guys. You, you guys are... Chomping at the bit for some streaming. You guys like the streams. All right, so we just need one more like, and I'll stream again tomorrow. So let's let's see if we can get that like. Harry the Creator says, uh, do you have any of the Jared Leto Joker pop vinyls? If so, could you show them, please? Dude, absolutely. Let me, uh, let me, I have a couple Joker pops. Let me grab them right now. You got the Joker Harley Quinn two pack, where you get the ju boxer Joker and the, the common Harley Quinn painted in uh, the slightly more expensive metallic paint, exclusive to Fye. I don't have an Fye anywhere around me. I thought I did, but it closed down, so I just ended up grabbing this thing on eBay because I don't have all the Suicide Squad pops, but the Harley Quinn and Joker two pack is like it's essential. Like it's it's an essential for me, so I had to get that. So I got the boxer Joker painted metallic, and I have your oop, I have your regular Joker. Shirtless Joker with one purple glove. I'm not the biggest fan of Jared Leto's interpretation of the Joker, but I don't hate it. I don't dislike it. I thought it worked. Definitely, obviously, Heath Ledger's was better, not only because the performance was better, but he had more screen time, and not to mention he was in a better movie with, sorry, David, but he was with he was a better director. Uh, David Ayer's great. He's done a lot of great stuff, but he's, he's no Christopher Nolan Batman. Let's just say that. Jaden JS says, what is your favorite Wii U game? By the way, you got over 50 likes. Boom! We got 57 likes, ladies and gentlemen. I will officially be streaming tomorrow. I have a feeling I'm going to be streaming every day at this rate because you guys just keep bumping. You keep bringing it to the next level with these likes. I don't think I've ever gotten 57 likes on a stream while we were live. So I really, really just want to thank you guys for just being on the stream. I'm going to read a few more comments, then I'll get into my top 20 LEGO minifigures. Let me know if there's any Funko Pops in my collection you want to see. I'll go get them. I'll show them to you. I got a bunch of World of Nintendo figures. I got I got everything, man. Let me know what you want to see. I'll pull it up. You can see it. Uh, this is what it's all about. Just doing some uh, live, live streaming. Kenny Baker did die. Rest in peace, says the gaming LEGO. Harry the Creator says, I actually really like Jared Leto's Joker a lot. Like the dress sense and the gangster mobster vibe i will totally agree with you on that i i really really enjoyed it uh it's just you know coming off of heath ledger it's it's hard to accept him uh i actually interesting piece of information about jared leto's joker apparently a lot of 
or at least quite a few things he he wanted did not happen in the movie, and he was he's a little bit disappointed. Like number one, I was talking about yesterday, the crew members, people working on the film, they were shooting actual film, and the, and Jared was in character the whole time, so he would. A lot of people were not happy about the way he was like holding up production because he was being all weird in the Joker. That's that's what I've heard from interviews of people that have worked on the movie, as well as on the other end of the spectrum from Jared Leto's point of view. Why didn't they give him the, the Joker scars? Apparently, Jared Leto was talking to the director, David Ayer, and he was like, yo, we should definitely do the Joker scars. Like, that would be sweet, right? We got to do it. It's the new Joker. It's the new Joker look, right? It's the, the two th past post-2008 Joker. That's how he looks, right? And David Ayer was like, no, let's, let's actually not do that. I don't know, man. It, maybe it would have come across a little cheap, like they're stealing it from The Dark Knight 2008, but... I would have liked Jared Leto's Joker with the with the scars on his mouth. I feel like that would have been cool. It would have been a nice, like, it would have at least felt a little bit more. He's already doing the Heath Ledger voice. Can we just give him the scars, please? But, yeah, he was a good Joker. Don't get me wrong. I don't dislike him. I like him. I like the way it works. I just wish, A, I wish he was in a movie that was put together a little better, just a little bit. And I wish we got a little more of him. And in the same vein, I wish that his, his part in the story mattered a little bit more. It seemed like they were just kind of forcing him into the story. And I, that's because I've seen the movie three times now that I can say this, like, cause I've noticed that first time I watched it, it was just like, yeah, sweet. That was suicide squad. Third act was a little, little messy, but, uh, you know, it was a suicide squad movie. Right. But, uh, after seeing it a few times, you start to be able to nitpick and like find, you know, different things. And that's, you know, that's what I'm doing here. I'm letting, I'm letting you know what I found. Uh, I'm really glad that it seems like a lot of fans really enjoyed Suicide Squad. And I, yeah, you know, good for you. If you find complete enjoyment out of it, awesome. But I, you know, I was taken out of it just by a couple of things. But overall, I like it. It's a good movie. We'll get it on Blu-ray. We'll watch it a fourth and fifth time easily. Uh, not in theaters, but, you know, I, you know, I'll find a way to see it. <laughs> the Gaming Lego says Obi-Wan or Anakin. You gotta go Obi Wan, dude. If once Anakin becomes Darth Vader, it's a little harder to choose. But pre Darth Vader, Anakin can he can screw off, dude. I'm choosing Obi Wan. Uh, I'll read a few more comments, then I'll get into my top twenty Lego minifigures. Doctor Who ate my bacon is nice username it says react to Lego Motel One. That's a good idea. That's an idea. I think either you or someone else floated that yesterday on last night's stream, and I will try to do that. I will try to get to that. Uh, the master builder says Luke or Yoda. That's so tough. If we're talking um, original trilogy in that timeline, I would choose Yoda because he he's he's still the most powerful Jedi technically, you know, but he's still a little eccentric because he's been in hiding for so long, and it's it's probably a little bit he's eccentric because he's been in hiding for so long, and a little bit he's testing Luke to kind of see if if you know to test Luke's sense of judgment the way Luke judges people. I, you know, what I'm talking about. Uh, Iraz Banuri says, do you like poop? Um, that's a, that's a pretty stupid question. I'm going to be honest. Uh, Gungan Hunter 506 says Lando or Poe. you gonna, you gotta make me choose Lando or Poe. I'm going to have to choose Lando. Poe's great. Poe's, Poe's close, but it's, it's, it's Lando. Lando's got more screen time and he's, he's just a smoother dude. Um, you can do the English says, how did you create the Lego city scenes in a uh, Lego motel? I just have a bunch of those, um, forget what they're called the they're not like ultimate collector sets but they're just the the lego creator big buildings i have a couple of those and i just kind of set them up with a few smaller buildings in the background sometimes i have like my ipad or my laptop with a, a google image of like a city and i just kind of put that out of focus in the background and that's a good way to open up your set and create depth in a scene and it also adds a little bit of a light source too when you can get an ipad or a, a, a computer screen projecting a background for me that like i love that because that's like a, a throwback to what they're doing actually now in rogue one or in space movies like uh interstellar where instead of using a green screen or blue screen they actually just had a big 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 projection projector or big screen or something outside of the cockpit windows of the ships and that's how rogue one did like the hyperspace effect that's how interstellar did like all the space effects so that that's kind of my version of that i Lately, a couple of years ago, I would have had a different answer, but lately, now that I'm making stop motion with a little more experience, I completely stay away from green screens, from doing stuff like that, just because 
it limits a little bit what you can do, but keeping everything practical, keeping everything in camera opens up new possibilities. And I think with a green screen, it you can you can you can do more things, but it doesn't look as good. Whereas I like I like being creative and figuring out, okay, I want to do this thing. It would, it would probably be easy with a green screen, but how can I figure this out without a green screen? And I think that mentality has caused me to form creative solutions that I wouldn't have if I had I just said, ah, screw it, we'll do a green screen. That's that's what you do, right? You do a green screen. I like to stay away from green screen nowadays. I like to keep everything practical in lens, especially now since I have a really, really nice lens. I want to just make my lighting perfect. And it's hard to perfect lighting on a green screen because once you light your scene, you pop a green screen in there, it's like impossible to, you, you, you would need to develop with you know 3D animation, the background you're going to use so that it matches the lighting of your set. Because if you're just pulling an image off Google Images and green and green screening it in the back of your thing, it's not it's not going to match. It's you know we, whether it's shot at the wrong angle or the lighting doesn't match, you're going to run into something. Whereas I've never had a problem just taking uh, the same exact Google image you would have green screened in, putting it on a, a computer screen, and then building my set in front of the computer screen and letting light pour in from you know you guys get what I'm talking about. Darth of Coco Productions says 65 likes, dude. Yes. Nice, man. 65 likes. In, that's more likes than the other streams have combined. Maybe I should stream more on weekdays. And by that, I mean I'm definitely streaming tomorrow because I promised if we hit 50 likes during the live stream, I would stream again tomorrow. And here we are at 65, and we're still towards the beginning of the stream. So I really want to just, once again, for the 100 millionth time, extend my hand. Thank you guys for being on the stream. Uh... Aiden Momenzeda says, what kind of name is Lego Motel? Uh, you are clearly not up to date with my content. You don't, you don't know, like, one of my first uh, popular videos was the Lego Motel episodes. And uh, it's an interesting name that makes you think, makes you wonder, like, what is that, Lego, Lego Motel? And then you figure out what the content of the channel is, and it starts to kind of make sense. It's Lego animation, but some of it is, like, kind of profane, has swears in it and stuff, so, like, the motel kind of connotes like a, a grungier, dirtier section of the Lego community on YouTube. It's the, you got, you got a, the Lego Marriott, you know, the big, beautiful Lego hotel like Forest Fire 101. Of course, you're going to subscribe to him, but sometimes you might want to stay at the Lego motel, you know, smaller, you know, dirtier animation. You know, I don't know if that's a good explanation, but that's, that's why my name is that. Uh, Astro Squid says, K okay, bye. All right, I'll see you later. Uh, how did you get the voices in your Lego videos? I do all the voices myself. I record them into a blue snowball microphone uh, with GarageBand on my laptop, and I shoot that over to my computer, and I put the audio into Final Cut Pro where I'm editing it. So I just I record it all in one big, long audio track. John Doe, very, very generic name, says, Are you getting the Dark Knight Return pops? I'm very interested in, in the Batman pops from that, the, uh, the armored Batman in it specifically. That's that's probably the Dark Knight Returns pop I would want the most. XW Gamer says, "How old are you?" I'm in my early twenties. Uh, Sunless Productions says, "Please tell me what is Blue Wizard Productions." Blue Wizard Productions is uh, is my small production company. That's just me. I I'm a co-owner of a, a much larger production company that's doing a real TV show this fall called On Edge Productions. I'm the vice president. And, uh, you know, I, I'm a writer. I've directed stuff for them. So that's my main company. But here on YouTube, when I'm producing stuff for YouTube, I, I do it under my this other name, Blue Wizard Productions, which I like to think is a division of On Edge Productions. It's like the animation division of our, our larger company. But technically, they're two separate things. When I'm doing YouTube, it's Blue Wizard Productions. When I'm doing live action stuff, television, it's our bigger production company, On Edge Productions, who you can, you can find us on Facebook. We have a Facebook page. You can check out what we've been up to, find updates, stuff like that. But all right, let's let's find another comment. Tina Bird says, "Who is the best Batman?" <sighs> I might start a little fight here, but I, I'm going to say Ben Affleck. The battle, the battle frapper says, "I've never seen this channel before, and I think it's awesome already." The battle frapper, you you're my new best friend. What do you? How are you? I I just subscribed to you, the battle frapper. You're cool. I, I've never even seen your username before, and I like you already, so thanks for being on the stream. Uh, the Master Builder says, Obi-Wan original or Yoda prequels? Definitely, you got to get your Alec Guinness Obi-Wan on right there, dude. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go Obi-Wan original. 
Gungan Hunter says, what software do you use? I use GarageBand to record the audio. I use Final Cut Pro 7 to edit the frames and do the special effects. And I get the effects and sound effects from, I've, I've been collecting effects for years and I just kind of have a big folder full of stock footage and effects and stuff. And I, I get it from all, you know, every which way. So it's, it's hard to pinpoint where I get my effects and stock stuff, but you know, all my editing happens in Final Cut Pro 7. Grayson Daniel is asking me, why do you like Legos? Um, I don't buy as many Legos now as I did maybe a year or two ago, but uh, I love Legos because it allows me to practice making films without having to get together a bunch of people and convince them, like, here, you know, you gotta, you're, I know you're not an actor, but you need to act in this, like, you know, inviting my friends over and forcing them to act in my skits or whatever. So, I came back to doing Lego stuff because I wanted a quick and easy way to practice directing a scene, writing a scene, shooting a scene, building a set, making a skit or making a movie or making a short film, whatever you want to call it, making something like that with a camera and Legos is just as much experience, aside from the social aspect, is just as much experience, you know, working as you're going to get making a real film. And it's a lot easier to work with Lego things than real actors because you, you can just do the scene, you do it once, maybe twice if you mess up the animation, and it, it's usually like one take. You're shooting it frame by frame, you have absolute control. So it's not so much, why do I like Legos, but it's like, why do I like using Legos to make films? And I, that's my explanation, is I, I really believe that the best way for me to practice putting together a scene and using lighting to evoke emotion and to make something feel like it has gravity and weight to it in a scene and making characters feel important is just as hard, if not harder, with Lego figures as it is, as it is with real actors. And what my experience was, was I spent a long time just making films with Legos, and then I started directing live actors quite a bit for, you know, $50,000 projects, $100,000 projects, whatever. Like, I started doing, getting jobs like that, and it became something where I was realizing that all my experience making Lego films was really helping me. Because it's like, I mean, I'm an actor. I used to act on stage and do that. So that helps me work with the actors. But when it comes to like setting up a scene, knowing what shots I'm going to get, making Lego films really helped me get ready for that. And a lot of people wonder like, how do you get a job as a director? How do you get a job as a camera guy? Like what, how do you start? Honestly, it's going to sound ridiculous, but making films with your Legos is the best way to start because you got your set, You've got your characters. You can use literally this iPhone is like the equivalent of a 1K light on a movie set, which would cost like $6,000. But here I am like straight up. Like I can just get, I can just pull a set. I can just pull a set, you know, shine a light through it, you know, and pick where I'm going to put a bunch of different lights and Dude, I'm on a movie set. I'm shooting a movie right here on my desk in my room. I didn't get up. I didn't go anywhere, but I'm on the set of a movie. I'm shooting a movie. Uh, like, that's why I love Legos, because one week I can make a Star Wars movie. The next week I can make a Batman movie. The week after that I can make a funny little skit. And it, just the options you have, just for me, that's why I love Legos. I don't, I don't collect them because I want to collect them. I collect them because I, I want to have an arsenal of stuff that I can make movies with. I want to have a big pool of actors to choose from. My minifigures are my actors. My Lego sets are my, they're my sets. They're my set pieces. You know, and I modify them, per, you know, I reuse a lot of sets and I modify them, you know, as, I've been on that, I've been answering that question for like an hour now. So let me, uh, let me move on to a couple more questions. I keep saying this, a couple more questions and then I'll move on to my favorite minifigures. Darth of Coco Productions is asking, do you watch Rick and Morty? I've seen a few episodes. I absolutely love it. I think I saw the first two episodes on my on my friend's Hulu account, but uh, I don't have a Hulu account. I don't have access to the show, so I'll eventually just have to get the episodes. Or next time I hang out with a friend who has Hulu, I can I can watch try to watch Rick and Morty. But uh, for the record, I love the show. I just don't I just don't have a chance to watch it as much as I'd like to. Sean nine thousand says, "Can you please say in Mace voice, man? What the hell are these goddamn robots doing? Man, what the hell? What the hell are these goddamn robots doing here? God damn it, man! What the hell are these robots doing in here?" I can, I can give you a better take if you want one. Uh, someone's asking me, do uh, you play any games? Um, yeah, I play, uh, I play like every Nintendo game. I, I, lately, I've been playing a lot of Doom multiplayer online. I've been playing uh, Battlefront. 
uh, which I was a little disappointed by, but it's, it's a good game. It's, it's, I can return to it and still enjoy it, but it's no Doom. Uh, Doom is actually my favorite game right now. I don't know if that's a popular game for you guys in the chat, but uh, it's like my favorite game as of recently. Bungo Gaming, welcome to the stream. How many pops do you have? I counted the other day. I have about 164, 165 pops, and no, none are coming in the mail. None are on the way in the mail right now. So I've, I've found a way to finally stop ordering new pops. I haven't gone to the store and looked for pops for about a week now. I'm, I'm about a, seven days clean without an incident. So we're gonna, I'm going to try not to buy as many pops. In fact, I'm going to try to start selling Funko Pops and Amiibos. Uh, not all of them, just like a good portion of them, just so I can you know, have money to get the next Funko Pops. I don't want all my money to be going into Funko Pops. There's a, there's a certain amount of money I allot to these things, and I, that's, you know, I try to keep it that. I try to budget you know, as much as I can. Sometimes something pops up. Like the other day, I found the Labyrinth Pops online early on eBay, and I, just, I, I had to get them. They're a little more expensive than they would be if I waited a few weeks, but I just, I'm really excited for those Labyrinth Pops. Uh, Graven Decay, Ramsey, react to my latest video. All right, I will do that. I will react to your guys' videos after I do my top 20 Lego things and, and probably after I react to a couple trailers and just stuff like that. And then I'll start taking uh, subscriber videos and I'll react to them. We can all have a discussion about them. We are already up to 77 likes, guys. This is the most popular stream I've ever done. I'm absolutely going to be streaming again tomorrow. You guys deserve it. Clearly, this is some content that you guys enjoy. Uh... Leap and Arts says, do you have a side job from YouTube? Yeah, yeah, YouTube is my side job. I have, a, I have like a real job, and then YouTube is like what I do in my spare time. So I'm, I'm just real happy that people enjoy what I do here on YouTube and that I've, that, and that I've been as, success, as successful as I've been in my actual uh, film and television career. So Anthony DeLeo says, hi. What's going on, Anthony? Good to see you. Some guy whose name I can't understand says, I never see your channel. Well, you're, I mean, you're seeing it right now, dude. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, I really appreciate that you're part of the stream. I hope you're enjoying it. I hope you're having a good time. Uh, Nando says, please go to the subjects. Uh, yeah, good point. All right. Uh, the master builder is asking, this is the final question I'll take right now. What time will you stream tomorrow? Probably same time. 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern time in America. And one last question. This is just because it's kind of a cool question. And Hero 145 says, do you collect Pokemon? Uh, yeah, I'm a human being, dude. Of course I collect Pokemon. I have, a, I have a folder of Pokemon cards. I don't think it's in... Yeah. It's not in the direct vicinity, but I can pull it out a little bit later. Oh, it's actually... Man, I thought I was going to be able to get away with this. All right, no, it's right here. Okay, I'll show you. This is, this is my... I have some Yu-Gi-Oh cards as well, because, you know... Here's, this is the Jigglypuff page. Here's the next page with a bunch of EX Pokemon. There's another page. You know, I, yeah, I collect Pokemon cards. I've been I've been playing a little Pokemon Go too. Not a whole lot, but I have but I have been playing it. Uh, I try to I try to stick my toe in all the different pop culture stuff. Uh, XW Gamer says he just caught a Snorlax in Pokemon Go. Right on, dude. Sweet. All right, so let's get into our topics. First thing I want to do, actually, before I cover my top 20 LEGO minifigures is, did you guys hear about the new LEGO Batman sets that just got, uh, I don't know if it was announced, I'm pretty sure it was leaked, but there's a whole bunch of new LEGO sets from Batman coming out, including a, a new Arkham, Arkham Asylum set, which blew my mind, so there's going to be a new Arkham Asylum set in a few months, which, which means I might have to actually push off my Arkham City series, depending on what that set ends up looking like, but let me just pull up the list here. I found out about this from an excellent Lego YouTuber called Just Too Good. I'm sure a lot of you guys know about him, but if you don't, it's Just Number Two, and then Good. Uh, the guy gives Lego news. He reviews sets. Does a lot of cool stuff. I would absolutely recommend checking out that guy's channel. He's an excellent YouTube uh, Lego YouTuber. Lego with Games uh, says, "Call out to me." Just did it. The Mini Melon says, "Arkham Asylum set." You got it, dude. You you heard what I said, bro. There will be a brand new Arkham Asylum set coming, I'm pretty sure, this fall. Doctor Who Ate My Bacon Watch is uh, just too good, so right on. Yeah, he's a great YouTuber. He's I, I love I love that dude's videos. All right, I'm pulling up his video right now. Uh, I would recommend just going to his channel and watching it, but let me just go real quick through. Here are the new uh, Lego Batman sets you can expect. There's going to be a new Batcave in addition to the... Uh, so you're going to have a new Arkham Asylum set. 
which I'm sure is going to be phenomenal. We're going to get a new Bat Cave, so they're going all out with new Batman sets. Uh, it's going to include a Penguin. When, if you guys remember from Collectible Minifigures Series 16 that just dropped, there's like a there's little Penguin guys you could get in one of the packs, and they're going to include those Penguins with the Penguin, the villain from Batman, in the Bat Cave set. So that sounds pretty awesome. Uh, let me see what else we do, 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 what else we got here uh, miscellaneous like a mr. freeze figure a lot of different villain vehicles uh, you're gonna some of the mini figures in these sets are calendar man kite man zebra man tarantula they're getting really really obscure with these villains uh, hopefully we get a clay face I would love to see clay face and like I would I would put him in my in my animations like that if they made a clay face uh, there's a new Batwing coming. It's the it's a different one than the one you see in the trailers. There's a Killer Croc swap set, and you're gonna get a Killer Croc that about the size of the Rancor, which that sounds amazing. Uh, yep. So Croc swap set. Uh, new Arkham Asylum, and the new Arkham Asylum is gonna be at least a hundred dollars. It's gonna have Batman, Barbara Gordon, Aaron Cash, two Arkham guards, Harleen Quinzel. Joker in his jumpsuit, uh, Two-Face in his Arkham jumpsuit, Riddler in an Arkham jumpsuit, so a bunch of villains who've been captured, and three other villains. That's pretty cool. I'm pretty excited about that. So there's going to be a bunch of new LEGO Batman sets coming out. I'm pretty excited about that. Let me get into my top 20 LEGO minifigures. We are up to 84 likes, guys. Hold on, I'm going to have to live stream every day for the rest of the week, man. This is the way. This is how many likes I'm going to keep getting. You guys are killing it. Killing it, Daryl. Killing it. Let me check some comments here. All right. It froze. Okay. Apparently, we froze. Let me refresh it. Let me see. Okay. All right. I'm not getting any technical difficulties on my end. But I don't, I don't want to start the top 20 minifigures if it's glitching. Uh, okay. All right, apparently it's working. Apparently it's working. The Gaming Lego says, sub to me, please. All right, so we're doing the top 20 minifigures right now. Number 20, we're going to have to go Clone Wars Palpatine. Not because I like the Clone Wars, which I just never really watched much of it, but this Palpatine figure was a must for me because of his little arm capes. He's got, like, two little capes on top of each other. Pretty cool. It just the, the 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 little mark, like the way his face is drawn on, like is is the design of his face is perfect. And he's just a goofy figure. And the voice, and along with the voice that I make from, he, he's just, it's the perfect combination. Yeah. What are you doing on my live stream? That's that's the voice I do for him. So, <laughs> all right, we'll go number number nineteen. All right, let me put the ones I've already done to the side so I don't get wicked confused. We'll go number 19 is going to be the Dementor from one of the uh, more recent Harry Potter sets. This guy looks really cool. I like him because he's he, you can like do stuff with his arms. I got a couple of these guys, but I just kind of pulled one out to do the list. It's like your iconic Harry Potter bad guy aside from Voldemort, so that's that's pretty cool. 19 number 18 we're gonna do another Harry Potter one the mountain troll from from the very first Harry Potter this minifigure is about 20 years old at this point almost so I I completely forgive anybody for not recognizing it but yeah this was one of my favorites I think this was one of my first Lego sets uh, after like moving from the from the Midwest to the to the East Coast big fan of Harry Potter so that's 2018, 2019, This is number 17, Indiana Jones, of course. you got to put him in your top minifigure list. Love this dude. Don't have his whip or his strap with him because I just kind of pulled him right off the Lego Motel set where I was shooting, and I just put him in, put him in the list. So Indiana Jones, I'm sure a lot of people have him. 2019, 18, 17, number 16, we're going to go Drax the Destroyer from the Guardians of the Galaxy sets. I just love how much detail is on his chest and his arms and his back and the back of his head. You know, his face looks really good. He's got his two knives. They went with some leg printing there, pretty detailed. 
I, I was just really excited about this figure. So that's why he made my top list. He's, he's one of those figures that I'll, you know, I'll, I will always have a special place for him. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, all right, 15. Number, number 15, we'll go Vision. We'll stick with Marvel for a little bit. We'll go with Vision. I just love how, like, easily manipulatable his cape is. It makes animating a lot easier with him. I like the, I like how they went with his skin color. They could have they could have done a lot worse of a job. So I really like this figure. I just like the color scheme a lot. He pops out in your collection. And Vision is just an awesome character in general. So I know he's not perfectly in focus, but you can pretty you can pretty much get the idea. All right, we'll go number 14. Number 14, we'll go Mr. Freeze from the uh, a couple of years ago was, was like the Aquaman and Arctic Bat Batman, the Arctic Freeze playset. I think that's called something like that. And this is basically like the Arkham uh, City video game, Mr. Freeze. And I, I absolutely love it. He's got a little bit of hair on him. That's weird. We'll do that. We'll get that off of there. So he, he's looking awesome. Love the detail on this. Love the sculpt. Love that you can kind of you can remove you can remove the little face plate here, you know, and like stick it back on. Really great design, really fun one. You're gonna see him in the Lego Batman Arkham City videos that I make. Those the new animations. Hopefully those can come soon. But if these new Lego Batman sets are as cool as they sound, I might have to delay it a little bit so I can get those sets and make my Arkham City series way better. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so number 13. Yeah, number 13 is going to be Carnage. This is an epic little minifigure. Got a lot of great printing, great red tentacles. He's very similar to the Venom minifigure, head back printing. Uh, very similar to the Venom minifigure, but red and Carnage. And Carnage is cooler than Venom. So, so that's why I chose him over Venom. He just looks cooler. All right. So we'll, that was 13. Number 12, Sand Trooper from Star Wars, classic Sand Trooper. I just love the dirty, like, sand details as well as this orange pauldron. They could have just made it flat orange, but they put lines and dots and little details on there. I love how much printing he's got. No arm printing, but they kill it on the legs and the chest. The helmet looks amazing with the little sand marks on it. This guy is just an excellent little trooper. Really good stuff. All right, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so we've covered seven. So this is number number 11, number 12, <laughs> 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14. Yeah, or no, 13. So this is, yeah, this is number 12. Number 12, we'll continue with troopers. Gotta love the First Order Stormtrooper. Nice little detail on his pauldron there. It's a darker, richer orange than the other one, but there's some really good printing on this guy. What really what really makes it perfect, I mean, aside from this back printing, there's no arm printing, but the leg printing, chest printing is great, but the helmet is just perfect. This is the perfect translation of a First Order Stormtrooper into Lego. That's why I've collected so many of these little guys. Uh, I just, I love the First Order Stormtroopers. They're a lot of fun. Let's just make sure I don't have any technical difficulties. All right. Uh, Lego with Games says, I got to go. Thanks for calling me out. Hey, no problem, dude. No problem. Uh, Josh G was using the bathroom. All right. No, no problem. All right. I don't, I don't understand these comments, <laughs> but I'm going to keep going. All right. So number, thir number 11, BBA. BB-8 is a great minifigure. He's not he's not your standard Lego minifigure, but he's got he's got a head and a body, so you know I count him as one. You can he's got articulation. You can turn his little head, you can pop it off, roll his little ball around. It's, 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 what do I need to say to you? I don't even need to I don't even even need to explain. This is a great little minifigure. Not only because BB-8's a lovable little droid, but because this is a great translation to Lego. All right, so now I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, so number ten. No, he's better. He's better than that. He's he deserves better than that. Actually, I think this is number nine. So we'll go we'll go Batman. 
from one of the more recent sets. I always get lost with the numbers. You know, just you get you guys keep count. You you'll you'll be you'll be keeping count. You'll know when I get to number one. <laughs> this Batman's really cool. I like how they printed his little boots on, give him a little more detail, nice torso. It's got a, like a reflective quality to it. I like how they gave him a little darker skin tone. He you don't see the skin under the hat, the help the cowl anymore. It's black now. They kind of keep that painted. Uh, he's got a change of face. He's got his angry face and he's got a stern face. So I just I really like the updates. Uh, the shorter little spikes on his on his cowl look really cool. They're just overall continuing to update the Lego Batman minifigure. He's got a soft cape like Vision. Not exactly the same material, but it's it's softer, easier to do animation with. Really good minifigure. All right, I believe number eight now will go with Radagast the Brown from a little throwback to a couple of years ago from the Hobbit sets. This this figure blew my mind when it came out. I, I'd always wanted a Radagast the Brown set. Delving a little further into the Lord of the Rings mythology with Lego, he's got a little he's got a little little crap on his cape there. But you know what? It's Radagast the Brown. He, he's got a little bird poop on his face, so I don't think he cares that he's got a little spot on his cape. Love the sculpt. Love the hat. He comes with a couple different faces. He has like this angry, attacking like battle cry face, and he's got his regular face. The printing is extremely detailed. The feather in his cap is like a, its own separate piece. You can like pull it out. It's, it's just a lot of great detail in this minifigure. Okay, I believe number number six, Sauron, Saruman. Sorry. <laughs> He's, he is the white wizard who, who turns bad at the beginning of the first Lord of the Rings movie. He's, whoop. This is the one with the block legs. Uh, so you got to buy the Tower of Orthanc set. He's exclusive to that to get this little piece here. But he looks best with this piece because he, he does have a long flowing gown and this kind of fits it pretty well. They could have done Gandalf that way too. That would have been cool. But I understand why they didn't. So he looks really great. He's got a good face. It's the same face as Count Dooku. Because it's the same actor, you know, and he filmed, you know, those movies pretty close together. So it's, it's reasonable that they would do that. His beard and hair piece is excellent. They ended up uh, reusing it for Gandalf the White. But this one is Gandalf the White's hair piece, but with extra little paint apps on it, which is, that's pretty awesome. Now we'll go to Darth Vader. This is the new Darth Vader from the uh, Emperor's Throne Room battle set. I think that came out about a year ago now. A little less than a year or something like that. About a year ago. More than a year. About a year ago. We'll go with about a year ago. I like his helmet because it comes off in uh, two pieces. you got Vader with the little bottom part of his mask there, so you can kind of recreate that scene at the end of Return of the Jedi. Excellent printing going on here. Really nice uh, lack of printing on the back there. I thought there was printing, but there's not. They kind of dropped the ball on that. But they did put these really cool scars in the back of his head. So I think that's kind of a reference to not only Return of the Jedi, but I think you see that a little bit in Empire Strikes Back. I'm just a bit, it's not exactly accurate, but I just like the way the helmet comes off in two pieces. It's like you can like, like remove it, but he's still Darth Vader. It doesn't look goofy. The best Darth Vader minifigure made right here, in my opinion. Next up, this one. Not my favorite character, not from my favorite movie, but the minifigure itself, you can't deny. It's phenomenal. It's like an absolutely awesome minifigure. I got it for free. Uh, it's kind of a long story, but I ended up just getting it for free. So this thing is excellent. Looks awesome. And I, I would have gladly paid for it, but I was able to kind of just get my hands on one. Really beautiful. I love the little eyeballs, the little sculpt. This whole just bottom sculpt is amazing. The way that it's super accurate, not to mention the hair sculpt, which is just very detailed. It's got a lot going on, a lot of different colors, different molded little elements put together. This is really, really good. And they even put a little hood on the back of the back of the shirt. This is one of the most detailed Lego minifigures ever made, from at least from the Star Wars line. So really, really happy I have this one. Looks pretty cool. Kind of iconic, you know, depending on who you ask. Uh, Lego with Games says, I'm subbing, man. Hey, you know what? I love you with all my heart. 
uh, Grave Indica says, Ramsey, react to my latest video. It's a stop motion. All right, dude, I will. I will absolutely do that. Just let me get through my list of minifigures, and then we'll start doing stuff like that. Uh, do you have the Back to the Future set? I do have the Back to the Future set. I can pull that out a little while ago. Oh, you just reminded me. Those minifigures absolutely need to be on this list. <laughs> so this is technically my top 22. It's my top 22, all right? So sue me. A lot of, a lot of great stuff in here. here. Let me just, I'll show you the car real quick. Excellent little car. Get the license plate. Get your flux capacitor back there. The wheels. The wheels invert so you can turn it into like a flying car. This wheel's missing. I'll find it. Oh, here it is. Yeah, so we can kind of you can kind of turn the wheels down like that so it's open the doors up. It's just a, it's a phenomenal set. I got it as soon as it came out. But uh, to, to what I was talking about, the minifigures, you, Marty McFly, one of the best minifigures ever made. He's got he's an honorable mention. Marty McFly. Look at the way they did his little shirt, his other shirt. He's got his 80s layers. Back in the 1980s, people wore a lot of layers. They captured that very well. Really good, really good stuff. And then, of course, that Dr. Emmett Brown. Marty, we've got to go back to the future. Another really well done minifigure. Thank you for reminding me about that. Whoever that the beautiful soul in the comments was who, who reminded me. Because these figures absolutely deserve to be on this list. As well as this. This is one of my top minifigures. It's not even a minifigure. That's how good it is. All right. I'm putting it on the list. Next up is, of course, one that I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with. is Boba Fett from the Carbon Freezing Chamber with Mace Windu's lightsaber from the end of Boba Fett Unleashed. If you haven't seen my Lego Boba Fett stop motions, I would totally recommend checking those out. They're some of my most epic animations. This guy, I don't even know where to start. He's just got an incredible amount of detail, whether it's molded pieces, printed fabrics, printing on his legs, printing on his chest, printing on his back, movable visor. This, this thing is like one of the best minifigures ever made, easily. Another one I forgot that, I, that should be here, but I'm not going to bother going to get him, is the new Yoda from one of the... The new Yoda that they're using in the Lego sets, he's excellent. I, just, I have him somewhere. I don't know, I don't know if he's here. Yeah, I think he's, he might actually be in the other room. But uh, All right, so now we'll go Legolas, number three. I don't think he comes with this cape. I think I threw this cape on him, but either way, he's he's got a lot of great detail. Legolas is one of my favorite characters easily from Lord of the Rings. So it was just amazing to be able to get a couple of him as Lego figures in the Lord of the Rings sets. A lot of fun. Really nice sculpt for his elf ears and his hair and, you know, a lot of great printing. A lot of detail printing. I'll move his bow and arrow so you can see it a little better if you want. Really accurately done. A lot of loving attention put into that one. All right, second to last, Heath Ledger Joker. Absolutely epic minifigure. He only comes in like a $200 set, so he's a little bit hard to find Ooh, on his own. But I was able to find him for like 20 bucks, and uh, that was a reasonable price. 20 instead of 200 I think I think that was a good trade-off. Actually has printing on his back. I like the color of his gloves. Both of his faces are awesome. His grinning face is absolutely deranged and epic. And then his standard, his resting bitch face is, is also pretty fun too. A lot of different 80s layers like Marty McFly going on there. A lot of good detailed printing. Really like this guy. Definitely one of my favorite minifigures. And then my absolute number one favorite minifigure we got to go custom Jim Gordon. The face is from the uh, Dark Knight Rises let, uh, Bane Batmobile Tumblr chase from a couple of years back, a few years back. So this isn't custom, but the coat is custom. This is another torso from another minifigure. And uh, I just love this Gordon. One of the main reasons I make Lego Batman mini, uh, minifigure animations and stuff like that is because of this minifigure. It's because I love this Gordon. I like giving him screen time in my animations. And he's let me give you let me just give you one more good look at Gordon. He's he's got a great hairpiece. He's got a 
excellent alternate expression of him like being kind of scared. And then of course, little resting bitch face. So that's pretty cool. Great minifigure, great stuff. I have a, he's got a brick arms gun in his hand there. That's a revolver from brick arms. I don't know if they're defunct or not. I think they're still around. But a long time ago, I bought a bunch of weapons off Brick Arms, and it's they've served me well for a long time. So I, would, I give them a little shout out. Give them a little shout out. Uh, what about Windu? You know what? We'll we'll give him honorable mention. We'll we'll let him be an honorable mention. Get a little Mace Windu action. He's he's not one of my favorite, like absolute favorite minifigures. I don't think I love the minifigure. I love all my minifigures, but the, you know he's up there. He's definitely top twenty-five, but he's not top. He's not top twenty. Let's be honest. But he's a great minifigure. Absolutely excellent minifigure. I just that that kind of bugs me. He's got a bare he's got a bare ass, but you know what? The front looks really really good. All right. Uh, do you have the Ghostbusters Ecto One set? Asks East Coast ninety one. I do not. I don't have that set. I never got around to getting it. Uh, maybe I'll get it at some point. Ghostbusters are cool. Sean 9000 says, Lego Motel makes me like Windu more. Well, I'm glad, man. I'm glad. <laughs> I, dude, all I saw out of the corner of my eye was that we had four dislikes. And I was like, all right, yeah, you can't please everybody. But then I look over to the likes. We have 95 likes. I have never gotten this many likes on a stream. So apparently I'm doing something right. I'm clearly getting a little better at this whole streaming thing. To reward you guys for giving me all these likes, I will absolutely be doing a stream tomorrow as well, just because you guys deserve it. Uh, same same time, same place. Grave into cases. Ramsey, my video, please. Sorry, I'm nagging so much, but it's my first episode of a long-anticipated series. People want it. All right, man. I will get to it. I will absolutely get to it. Uh, let's let's look at some more comments, though. Darth the Coco Production says, I'm thinking about making a Lego series like Rick and Morty with Gandalf and Bilbo. That's genius, sir. That is absolutely genius, and if you don't make it, someone has to but I really hope you make it. I want to see it. Keep me updated on that. That's such a good idea that I would I would voice it if you wanted. I'll do some voices. Uh, Viper Khalil says, should I start uploading videos on my customs? Dude, if you're making customs, I think the world deserves to see them. Dude, you have, If you have the gift of custom creations, you, you better share that gift with the world, all right? That's all I'm going to say. That's where I'm going to leave it. Uh, Bongo Gaming says, do you have Batman versus Harley Quinn and Deadshot? Yes, I do. I... Uh, I do. I have Harley Quinn right here. Uh, the Batman is probably in another drawer. And Deadshot is right here. So, yeah, here's these two. I have the set. I don't know where the rest of it is, but, yeah. These are. I really like the Harley Quinn. She was almost in my top. Uh, Deadshot is a really cool minifigure. Not one of my top favorites, but he's really well done. I don't like his yellow hands, but I've tried replacing the hands, and I can't. I think the yellow hands just work at the end of the day, so I, I left them as is. It's a little more color in, in my dark gray and blue palettes in my videos. So Deadshot's yellow hands kind of pop to give it a little bit of give it a little bit of three dimensional space or whatever. Doctor Who ate my bacon says, "Would you rather spend a day with horny Anakin or watch Jaden Smith movies for a day and can't change the movie?" Uh, I don't think anybody wants to spend any time with horny Anakin, but I would watch Jaden Smith movies for a day just to like laugh at them and make fun of them. I guess <laughs> if they're if they're not good, but uh, there's a couple of good Jaden Smith movies. Pursuit of Happiness wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. The new Karate Kid. I'm not a fan of it, but it wasn't bad. It's not a bad movie. It's a good. It's a decent remake of Karate Kid. Let's not let's not a, you know let's not be too rough on the on the poor boy. But he does say pretty ridiculous things on Twitter, and uh, I guess he deserves any lambasting that he gets. Darth the Coco Production says, Ramsey, could I use some locations from your videos, such as the Lego Motel and Fasted Fried Restaurant? I mean, I can't mail the sets to you. I mean, but you can absolutely call something Fast and Fried. You can call something the Lego Motel. If you guys want to reference my videos, I'm honored. I'm flattered. I take it as a compliment. I will not get it. I don't have a copyright over Fast and Fried or like the names of characters in my stuff. So you got feel free to use them. Maybe throw my channel in the description or something like that. You don't have to. I mean, but yeah, I, if you guys want to do fan stuff like it's or a, a video based on my stuff, like whatever, go ahead. You know, do it. Uh, did you have breakfast? 
asked Josh Key. I I did have breakfast. It was a it was a strange breakfast, and I didn't eat very much, but I ate it. I had it. Uh, Graven Decay says I was able to press the send button of this comment with my tongue. That is impressive. Magnum Ranger says I'm thinking about making a Lego series about the sequel to the Dark Knight series, mostly because I want to bring back the Heath Ledger Joker. That's cool, man. That sounds awesome. That's kind of what I'm trying to do with uh, what kind of my little Batman series. Now that we're going into Arkham City, I will get to kind of explore like what if the Joker was around when Batman had to fight Bane and like you know the League of Shadows. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Darth the Coco Production says, "Do the kitty voice if you can." <laughs> the pink, uh, the pink kitty voice from some of the Lego Motel episodes is heavily computer augmented. Like I, I put filters on it. I put high pitch filter over a high pitch filter over a high pitch filter. To get, I have a very deep manly voice, and I, I can't make the kitty voice, so I won't even I won't even bother trying. Uh, no, but I mean I can go pretty high pitched with my voice, but not as high pitched as the kitty from the from the thing. I put a lot of filters on it to get that, so I couldn't I couldn't do that exact voice right now. Sean nine thousand says I started working on a series about Boba Fett's daily life inside the Sarlacc. I think you told me about that yesterday. Nice dude, nice. Nice. All right. Darth the Coco Productions says, tell a joke with your Joker voice. Gee, uh, wow. All right. Um, uh, no, I feel like it's just going to be cringy if I, try, if I try to do that off the top of my head. I don't want to. I'm sorry. I can't do that. But boy, 96 likes, guys. Wow. Yeah. This is, thank you. <laughs> All right. Universe of Gaming says, talk to me. Laugh out loud. All right. Hello. How are you? This is me talking to you. Jack Williams says, will Superman be making an appearance in your Batman series? Yes, I not to spoil anything, but I was I'm playing, I'm still playing with the idea of having Superman actually show up and do have like a part in the story towards the end of uh, volume five of Arkham City. But uh, right now in the writing process, I haven't reached volumes three, four, and five. I'm just kind of figuring out volumes one and two of Arkham City in the Lego Batman series. So we, will we get a reference to Superman you know, you know, throughout the Arkham City volumes? Absolutely. Will Superman show up? I'm not 100% sure yet, but I'm trying to make it happen without having it feel forced. Um, Josh G says, will you please subscribe? Um, yeah, I mean, that's... I guess the chat's a good as place as any to advertise your channel, so yeah, that works, that works. Isaac Brasley says, can you read this message? Hi, I just subscribed. Thank you so much Isaac Brasley I really appreciate your subscription I just read your message hope you're having a wonderful day uh, another comment is Universal Gaming says riddle me this Lego Motel but then there's no riddle so Jesus Roca shout out all right right on. are you John Roca's cousin or something <laughs> from from Collider movie talk uh, are you hungry asks uh, someone is asking me um not not really right before the stream started i had a really big delicious turkey sub so i'm, I'm gonna be good for a while josh with a killer he's make, making got he's got jokes dude josh has got jokes uh watch my lego audition stuff all right let me see how long i've been going here probably about an hour yeah wow that hour just flew right by Time flies when your people are liking your videos. All right. Um, what is your most wanted Funko Pop? That's a question I've gotten before, but I will I will go ahead and answer it. Um, what is your most wanted Funko Pop? Probably the Indiana Jones Pop that they you could only get at San Diego Comic Con, and it's it's on eBay for like a million dollars. So I would love that Indiana Jones Pop. I, I was when I found out that Funko was sharing their exclusives and you can like this, this guy is an SDCC exclusive, but you could get him at hot topic because he was a shared exclusive. But in the Indiana Jones pop, the only way you can get him is uh, at San Diego comic-con, which is now over. So the only way you can really get it is if you win like a Funko contest on Twitter or Facebook, or if you buy it on eBay for a million and a half dollars, but uh, I, I don't have a million and a half dollars, so I can't get the Indiana Jones Funko pop. There's a Disney Parks exclusive Indiana Jones pop. I would I would settle for that one too. Just any Indiana Jones pop. Hopefully someday I can get my hands on them. But uh, yeah, we are almost at a hundred likes. That is insane, dude. We haven't even been going two hours. 
we've been going about an hour and we got a hundred likes that's amazing so clearly these streams are picking up pace more people are interested in them I will be doing a lot more streams as well as obviously uploading my regular animations I'm gonna try to at least do an animation every couple weeks uh, but if not I'll absolutely be continue doing these streams because I love talking to you guys uh, I love your faces and I'll see you tomorrow I don't I just felt like Philip DeFranco real quick so I had to go there but um let me know let me know if you watch Philip DeFranco he's a great youtuber check him out subscribe if you haven't already uh, Josh G says, why is there Batman shampoo and no conditioner Gordon? Sorry, I just had to take a minute off, dude. That joke, that joke was too spicy, dude. That meme, that meme was too fire, bro. Conditioner Gordon. Batman shampoo, conditioner Gordon. You you deserve a million subscribers. Someone get this man a million subscribers. Give get give him the YouTube money. Give him all the YouTube money. That was the funniest joke I've ever heard. Uh, Levin Arts says scarce versus Keemstar. This is a topic I would love to get into right now. Just because this is something I've been following for a little while, and if you guys are interested in it, I'll talk about it for a couple minutes. Keemstar is uh, a shrinking drama channel on YouTube who kind of started this trend a couple years ago of taking big famous YouTubers who are having fights on Twitter or got into a car accident or what have you, died, got shot. He makes videos and he covers it and he, he basically, he, 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 he hides under YouTubers and he, and he drinks the little sweat that falls off of them and he, and he collects it in a cup and he makes a show out of it called Drama Alert. And uh, I, he's a pretty interesting character. Keemstar, I bet he's a nice guy in person. His show is not bad. Uh, I don't think it's absolute cancer, but I think scarce is a little bit better. But they both have their pluses and their minuses. Let's I'll strictly stick with uh, a scarce versus Keemstar comparison, real quick. Scarce. His downside is he doesn't always he he doesn't have the mind of like a news reporter the way Keemstar does. So the way he reports stories, he'll sometimes get stuff wrong or he won't be clear or he'll say something is 100% when it's not 100%. There's just evidence, like oh, there's just uh, questionable evidence or whatever. Whereas Keemstar is really anal about that stuff. Uh, the little stuff like that that scarce is a little bit sloppier on. Keem usually just once in a while he will mess up big time and scarce has never done that. So, I mean, that's... They're both they're both about the same. It depends if you want it. If you want some guy going, welcome to the news, you know, you go to Keemstar. If you want someone playing video games, going, hey, what's up, guys? Here, you know, go to Scares. It's the same exact thing, same exact taco, different shell. You know, I don't know, I don't know how to put it, but that's my opinion on Scares versus Keemstar. They're both respectable YouTubers, like whatever. Uh, except you know, Keemstar deserves the hate he's getting right now. Let's let's be quite honest. One thing I want to say. Keem acu Keemstar Accused Leafy is here, huge YouTuber with almost 5 million subscribers, of subbotting, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, and then the evidence that Keemstar was using to prove that kind of fell through. The person who put the evidence forward said, you know what, actually, there this could have been faked, so we don't know 100% if Leafy subbotted. And yet Keemstar is still adamant that Leafy subbotted. And if you guys don't know what subbotting is, it's where you go to some shady website and you pay someone to give you fake subscribers so your channel gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's not a smart thing to do. If YouTube finds out you're doing it, they terminate your channel. You get in a lot of trouble. You can get into legal trouble for technically stealing ad revenue money in some cases if you're buying views, because if you're view botting as well as sub botting, that's a problem. But the main thing is, Leafy debunked it. A couple of people came out and said, look, it's probably fake. We don't know for sure, but it's he, he's got 4 million subscribers. Why would he buy three subscribers a day from some weird sub botting site if he's already got four million real subscribers. Keem, all right, this guy needs to leave the stream. I will see you later, dude. Have a good time. Uh, but basically, I'll, I'll get to the point real quick and then I'll move on to more fun topics. Keemstar then comes out the next day, which I think was yesterday or the day before, and says, new drama alert coming tonight. We have more evidence as to why, more evidence that Leafy was sub botting. And the, the episode of drama alert comes out and he doesn't cover the topic at all. And at the end of the episode, he's like, "Yeah, we have we have some information about how Leafy subbotted, but we're gonna wait. We're gonna wait till maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow or the day after. We'll tell you about it because we just want to wait for more information, which is super sketchy. Because one, yesterday you were just proved wrong 
right? A lot of people now think your evidence is questionable. And two, you've just bait and switched your entire audience who just showed up to find out, oh, where's the new proof that Leafy's subbotting? And then you talk about how Sniper Wolf got arrested and you talk about, that's why you got dislike bombed. He's trying to act like Leafy fans are just attacking him with dislikes, which I'm sure they are, but a good portion of those dislikes and why I disliked Keemstar's recent videos because he took, he made it seem like he was going to show proof that Leafy was subbotting and then just at the end of the video doesn't say anything and just goes, yeah, I might tell you tomorrow. It's like, what? Dude, what are you doing, man? What are you doing to your audience? That's why he's getting that's why he's getting dislikes. And uh, let me know in the chat if you want to see my Keemstar Lego minifigure. I made a Keemstar Lego minifigure for my upcoming video, Lords of the Cringe, which is also Lego Motel 21. Let me know if you want to see the Keemstar minifigure. If not, we're going to move on to another topic. Uh, Ramsey, you have over 100 likes. Oh! Dude, we do have over 100 likes. This is, this is crazy. This is crazy. Yesterday's stream only has 53 likes. Tops. And now this one... Yeah, dude, we have 53 likes on yesterday's stream. Now we are over 100 likes. You guys are crazy. You guys are absolutely insane. We are... I have gained like 30 subscribers in in like an hour that this is amazing you guys are crazy you guys are absolutely insane thank you so much for watching you guys are awesome sounds like i'm ending the stream but i'm not i'll probably go another like 45 minutes uh someone's asking me my top three favorite breakfasts um i guess uh pancakes eggs and um pancakes eggs or cereal I guess I'm a, I'm a very simple breakfast guy. Any kind of eggs, you know, poached eggs, scrambled eggs, omelet. Eggs are cool. Pancakes are great. Pancakes and or waffles. Just that category is great. I don't know. I don't want to ramble about breakfast, though. So I'm going to end that. I'm going to end that right there. I'm going to stop myself right there. Uh, Joshua the Killer says, I also, also I subbed here. Nice, dude. Nice. G Money 5162 Channel Vlogs Showcases and more says... Please react to my Lego audition stop motion. I will do that. I will be reacting to you guys' videos pretty soon. Um, Isaac says bacon is kind of gross. All right, all right. Doctor Who ate my bacon says, <laughs> did you eat my bacon? All right. Right on, right on. All right, so we've been going for about an hour and 16 minutes. Do you guys have any trailers? Were there any trailers that came out recently that you guys want me to react to? We can, we can, is there like a movie trailer or a new TV series trailer we can watch and react to together? We've been doing that the past couple of days. Or if you want me to watch, do you want me to react to another type of video? We can react to a, a YouTuber. I know a couple of days ago people wanted me to react to Jacob Sartorius. I was a little bit reluctant to, but if you guys want me, if you guys want to watch Jacob Sartorius with me and roast him a little bit, we could do that. I don't care. What do you guys want to do? Jack Williams says Rogue One. All right, we, we actually already watched the Rogue One trailer yesterday. Uh, I could, we could react to a different Rogue One trailer. We could react to, like, the first Rogue One trailer. But we already reacted to the newest one yesterday. Uh, the new Resident Evil trailer. I haven't even seen that yet, actually. So, yes, let's react to that. Resident Evil trailer. Six days ago, the Resident Evil, the final chapter. All right, guys. So I'm pulling up Resident Evil: The Final Chapter uh, by Sony, the Sony Pictures Entertainment official YouTube channel. I'm on that video, so I'm queuing that up. I'm letting the ad play, and then I'm gonna pause, and I'll give you guys like 30 seconds to catch up, find the video, queue it up, so we can all watch it together, have a discussion about what we think of the trailer and all that, all that fun stuff. Also, let me know if there's any other trailers you want me to. If there's any other trailers you want me to watch, like, I'll do that. And then after that, I will watch a couple of you guys' stop motions because I had a lot of fun doing that yesterday, giving you guys advice, helping some of you guys even get subscribers. That was fun. Uh, can't believe there's 100 likes on this. And there, I mean, there's six dislikes. It's not a big deal, but there's 100 likes. I've never gotten that on a live stream. All right. All right. All right. Come on, let's roast Jacob. All right. So we'll, we'll do that right after the Resident Evil trailer. All right, so I'm going to play the Resident Evil trailer. I'm going to react to it. As, if I see one person who tells... 
if it was the first person I see who says I've got I've got the Resident Evil trailer queued up, I will watch it with them. And if nobody says it, then we'll move on to something else. Uh, Uh, Lucas Shelton is asking me, have you seen Forest Fire 101 Suicide Squad in Lego? I have. I, I'm a big fan of that. He has a really well done video. Really well done video. Forest Fire is excellent at animation. He's been doing a lot of collaboration lately, which is, brings his work. It was already very good. Now it's like up there. It's excellence. He's perfecting his craft. Really, really cool guy. He's got a cool YouTube channel. I have a lot of respect for him. Uh, all right. We got a couple people queued up. All right, so we're going to play the Resident Evil trailer in five, four, three, two, Resident Evil. Oh. Very heavy vignette. This is very stylized. I like it. Yeah, a little motorcycle action. I'm not a huge Resident Evil fan, so this is very out of context for me. So. It's shot very well. It looks really cool. Wow. It's like apocalyptic. This is like an apocalyptic setting. That's very interesting. Wow, these post-apocalypse like cityscapes look great. Artists, what do you want from me? Humanity will cease to exist unless you return to the hive. I don't trust you. You're in too. Everything's led to this. I'm going to kill every last one of them. Dang. This is some really cool action. Wow. I feel like I'm seeing the whole movie right now, but at the same time, I'm not. Is that a triple barrel shotgun and a dragon? Is that a dragon? That's a hell dragon from hell. That's really cool. It does. Oh, it's, it's Jorah from Game of Thrones. This is cool. Oh, that's awesome. Nice, nice stunt work. Killed Washington. The pacing of this trailer is really interesting. Resident Evil, the final chapter. And by that we mean we're trying to reboot a new trilogy. The next one will be called The Last Chapter. And the one after that will be called The Ultimate Chapter. <laughs> I mean, I don't have any criticisms of that. That was a really solid trailer. I'm not a huge uh, Resident Evil fan, so I wasn't expecting anything of it. I, it looks really, really cool. Uh, looks like your basic uh, zombie, action-y, uh, shooty, shooty, punchy, punchy kind of movie. That, that's cool. Nice. I, uh, I'm, a, I'm a way bigger fan of like superheroes and Star Wars stuff, so if you get me watching one of those types of trailers, I have a lot more to say. But that that was just a very solid trailer. I like the post-apocalyptic like city aesthetic. That's it, cool. That's really cool. Walking Dead, hands down. Yeah, Walking Dead is cool. Jumping off the cliff cliche. Yeah, there, there's a couple of, couple of things like that, but when you see it out of context, you kind of have to you take it with a grain of salt just because you don't know how it's going to be. Uh, <laughs> Force Legos 101 says punchy punchy. Like that's the way I talk, man. I'm sometimes I say weird stuff. I'm sorry. Alberto Vargas says favorite gaming console. Oh, it would have to be personal computer. I'm a PC gamer. Uh, other than that, I'm a, I, I like Nintendo stuff, but I don't. You know, I don't. I don't claim to be the ultimate gamer. Like I'm a very lightweight, sometimes like very casual gamer. So. I play I play Nintendo games on the Wii U. I play uh, classic like GameCube and 64. I, but mainly I've been playing Doom on the PC lately. A little some Battlefront mixed in there. I'm a big PC gamer, so that's pretty cool. 